Hey, fiends of the pod. This is your host, film critic and comedian, Nate Wyckoff, here to introduce a lesser uh, listen to mini review episode that uh, ran several years ago that we wanted to share with you because I think more people on this pod uh, now might enjoy this particular film. So listen, enjoy, uh, share your thoughts in the comments on our Instagram or to us directly at info at cultandclassicfilms.com and make sure you go to cultandclassicfilms.com to to, uh, join our newsletter and pick up some exclusive cult films or join our Patreon where you get them at a discount delivered every month to your door. Thanks so much. Enjoy the show. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode, which is part two of our Lookout Below series, uh, which is going to be the 1990 film The Gate 2 Trespassers, which is obnoxiously hard to find uh, for, for most of us. So we'll talk about it. Give you the scoop. Enjoy the show. <laughs> Welcome, friends and fiends, to another mini of Cult and Classic podcast. This is the podcast where we talk about two thematically linked films, one mainstream and one cult. And these mini are the Friday episodes we bring you between our Tuesday main episodes where we do little things like film reviews or interviews or product reviews that you might be interested in, stuff like that. Uh, and today, we're going to start a new trend, which we're going to be doing films in five. And these are five minute reviews. So I'm going to get right into today's, which is 1986's Witchboard. Um, this is kind of in honor of a uh, uh, video vixen and actress extraordinaire, Tawny Katane, who passed away recently, uh, which deeply saddened us. Uh, she was considered sort of a, a, a kind legend by all. So uh, our condolences to her survivors and of course, to all of us as fans, we, we miss her terribly, but we want to highlight her awesome work. So we wanted to start with what's one of my personal favorites, Witchboard from 1986, like I said. Now there's a lot of cool stuff to know about this movie. First, this movie was made uh, almost the same time and released almost the same, actually around exactly the same time that um, her, her big white snake video was released. She of course was a video vixen. She was in a rat music video and she'd been, uh, a, a, and, and after this and a couple more white snake videos, very well known for that. You've probably seen her on the car or in headlights, things like that. Um, so that's where she became sort of the sex icon we think of in the eighties and nineties. Uh, but like I said, when she was doing her, her most famous White Snake video, uh, this movie was wrapped and they released it about the same time. And apparently the success of or interest in her in the video actually drove the uh, viewership of this movie up, which makes sense because, um, you know, I think a lot of people had heard of her at the time. And so when they became sort of impressed and obsessed with her uh, uh, in this video, they ran out to catch this film. So what is the film about? Well, it's about uh, a Ouija board uh, induced possession. Um, the film is written and directed by Kevin Tenney, uh, credited often in his early films as Kevin S. Tenney. And Kevin Tenney is pretty well known in the cult world for making some really, really great features. This was his first feature film. Uh, he did a short in 84 that uh, has gotten some recognition called Book of Joe, but this was his first one two years later. He, after this movie, went on to do Night of the Demons in 88, The Cellar in uh, later 88, Witch Trap in 89, Witchboard 2 in 93, Pinocchio's Revenge, for those of you who remember that fun 96 direct-to-video, uh, tons of movies, absolutely great stuff. And he's got two movies in uh, post-production now after taking a uh, quite a long hiatus after the, the late first decade 2000s 2009 I think uh, is where his last completed film was released so he wrote and directed this film uh, the film is about a a, a woman and her boyfriend, Tawny Katane, and her boyfriend played by Todd Allen. Todd Allen, well known for some other 80s and 90s fare, um, but I remember him best from Django Unchained, which we reviewed on this very podcast not too long ago. He played Dollar Bill, one of the smaller but uh, fascinating roles uh, in 2012. To see him on screen again was fun. But he plays sort of the alcoholic boyfriend who is a, a good guy, but um, has trouble with his former best friend since childhood, uh, played by Stephen Nichols of Days of Our Lives fame. Uh, and they both had dated Tawny Katane's character, and uh, Todd Allen ends up being her sort of forever guy. And well, there's tension. Stephen uh, Nichols' character 
is the one that introduces the Ouija board and a bit of spiritualism as well as sort of the idea of, of uh, spirit possession um, and entrapment as, as briefly mentioned in The Exorcist. Um, and that was sort of the inspiration of this film. And it's an interesting mix because you would think that this is just a movie uh, based around demonic possession, but really there's a lot of interpersonal play between um, Nichols and Ad Allen's characters that makes sort of a bromance form and the progression is really great and the acting is really great and the writing is pretty good. Uh, so it sort of elevates it above a lot of the, even a lot of Tenny's later fare, which is made for a very different purpose, like The Cellar uh, or Night of the Demons, which is, is more of an 80s um, pulp vibe this one has more of a drama vibe but that doesn't mean there's not supernatural horror abounding there are several uh death scenes the special effects while kind of light um and practice they're practical in this movie uh are by uh, uh very well known uh special effects person to CeeLo bauer who worked on uh one of my favorites killer clowns from outer space in 88 and nightmare on elm street in 84 um stepped in along with some assistance to helm the effects in this one so uh there's not a lot there but what is there is is well done and it's just an all around really good film it's the kind of film that you would sit down and uh your friend who's not really a big film person would sit down and be like oh this is just some 80s garbage and then you start watching it and they're going to get invested because it is well done it does have good writing um the effects hold there's a little bit of green screen effect at the end that's kind of goofy may give you a chuckle but it's not going to detract from the film overall uh, and i think it's a great way to remember tonic tane to go see this feature there's also a lot of extras and a lot of uh, background on this film there were some spooky happenings to people who filmed in the house which is the primary set for this film it's the same house that they used in the original willard film from the 70s and waxwork and a bunch of others um and they don't use it as a film set anymore even though it's still standing to my mind, i believe uh so this is kind of a nice time capsule but anyway that's it for this film in five minutes. I am excited to bring more of these and really excited to get back to our main uh, duologies that we cover every Tuesday here on Cult and Classic Podcast. As always, uh, follow us, subscribe, write a review wherever you get your podcasts and send us your emails, questions, uh, anything like that to cultandclassicpodcast at gmail.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Cult and Classic Podcast and follow me on Twitter, Nate Wyckoff, film critic and comedian, and that is at Nate Wyckoff. Thanks so much and we'll catch you next time. Play us out as always is the chud with All About Evil. <laughs>